Today we're going to make these awesome little Chicago style deep dish pizza bites. These are really delicious, but don't worry, they're a real pizza cake to make. The toppings are top notch and the crust is a must. And the cheese rounds out the situation nicely, bringing a little culture to the party. But let's go ahead and get started before I can tell any more crummy food puns. And first of all here, we're going to prepare our dough for the pizza crust. This is my standard dough recipe. I use this for all kinds of stuff. We start off with two cups of all-purpose flour, along with a tablespoon of yeast and one teaspoon of salt. And no, we don't need any sugar in there. Check out the link in the description for my video on Does Dough Need Sugar to Rise? Once we're ready to mix, we're going to go in here with two-thirds of a cup of warm water. This should be around 100 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit or so. And we'll just continue to knead that for about five minutes or so until a soft dough ball forms. It should be able to pull away from the sides of the bowl. We don't want this to be super sticky. Adjust with a little extra flour if necessary, but this was just about perfect. And you don't need one of these stand mixers. You can easily make this by hand or a food processor or however is easiest for you. And we'll just cover that with a little bit of oil, cover the bowl, and leave this in a warm place to rise for about 30 minutes or until it's doubled in size. And while that's rising for us, we'll go ahead and work on the sauce for our pizza bites. This is another very simple marinara sauce that you might have seen a couple of times before if you've seen my other videos. To get started here, we need 6 ounces of tomato paste along with 12 ounces, that is 2 cans worth of water. And to avoid any lava faction problems, we're not going to stir this together right away. We're going to turn on the heat and go ahead and add about a tablespoon and a half of Italian seasoning along with one teaspoon each garlic powder and onion powder. Next, about one teaspoon of sugar, along with a teaspoon and a half of salt. And finally, our secret ingredient, about one teaspoon of MSG. Yeah, that's right, it's fine, just relax. Unless you have some anchovy paste around, this is the best way to add a good flair of umami to your sauce. I like to kind of shake the pan around a little bit, just make sure all of our dry seasonings are getting thoroughly hydrated before we get this mixed together. Now we'll just give that a minute for the water to come up to a simmer, and once it does, it's time to get this all whisked together. Be careful though, you remember that lava faction problem I mentioned earlier? Well, this is a very whisky business. By that, I mean we need to continually whisk right up until we put a lid on here. Because of the consistency of the sauce, if we let it just boil on its own, it throws up these little globules of lava that are super hot, and it's just no fun. So just whisk, whisk, whisk until you're satisfied that everything is thoroughly combined, and then we're just going to go ahead and slap a lid straight on here. And that's it. We can go ahead and pull that off the heat and let it cool a little while we assemble our pizza bites. We'll punch down our risen dough and just give it a little attention. You know how dough is. It's a little needy sometimes. And it's important we don't oil our muffin pan. We actually want the dough to kind of stick in there a little bit. And I'm just going to eyeball this, kind of portion it out into 12 as best we can. It doesn't need to be perfect. And once we're happy with that distribution, here's a little trick to save a little time forming these. We're going to use a second muffin pan. Now, our results are going to vary based on how well our two muffin pans fit together. But this is why we didn't oil the bottom muffin tin. That way, when we press down with these oiled muffin tins on top, it'll stick down into the bottom tray. And we don't have to worry about the dough pulling up onto this. So just line those up and we'll press firmly down. At least with my muffin tins, this didn't get me all the way there, but I'd say that probably did about 90% of the work for me, so still worth it. So if we need to, we can spend a little extra time just spreading these out with our fingers. But once these are conforming to the form, it's time to go ahead and top our pizzas. Now, I might have gone a little overboard on the cheese with these. Said no one ever. I'm going to fill each deep dish pizza bite with about 15 to 20 grams of mozzarella cheese. And then we're going to go on top with three or four pieces of pepperoni cheese or other toppings of your choice. Any leftover pepperoni belong to the chef. And as our final topping, we go in with a couple tablespoons of that homemade marinara. If you've never seen the sauce on top style, that's the Chicago deep dish style. So we'll just finish saucing up all of our deep dish pizza bites, and then it's time to whisk these off to a preheated 425 degree oven, where they need to bake for about 20 minutes. You can top these however you want and vary the cheese so you don't get quite so much runoff, but I actually really like the little chewy bits of cheese we got on the sides here. I think that might have been the best part. 
I recommend giving those at least 5 minutes to cool so you don't burn yourself. I hope this video helped to inspire you to give these a try. If it did, give me a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss our future recipes. This has been Graham with A Passion for Food.